Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. This is actually true. Uh, I, I'm I am very aware of how large the British Empire was at its biggest extent, but so does it mean that ninety percent of the current countries that exist today have area in them that was once occupied by the British? Because, I mean, wasn't there an enormous amount of West Africa that that the French went to and the British didn't really touch? Um. A lot of South America, right? Uh, let's, let's find out. Of the near 200 independent nations in the world today, all but 22 have been on the receiving okay. end of a British invasion. Okay. So, uh, Mali. Ivory Coast. Really? That's it? Okay. All right. Um, a lot of Central Asia. That makes sense. Um, okay. At its peak, the British Empire was the largest empire in all of human history, with its Royal Navy reaching every corner of the globe. It's no wonder that the sun never set on the British Empire. But as interesting as this fact is, there is one important question. Is it really true? Well, the fact originates from a 2012 book by Stuart Laycock entitled All the Countries We've Ever Invaded and the Few We Never Got Round To. But you might have seen it mentioned in an article by The Telegraph that came out shortly afterwards. The few that we never got round to. With a map that has become internet famous. The book has a section for every country, in alphabetical order, talking about each country's experience with the British armed forces, so being somewhat sceptical but also intrigued, I decided to give the book a read. So just how true is this? Okay. Well, just, in short- Okay, just, I think, like, it sounds good, right? Like, it sounds good. You, you just fast forward if you want, guys, the original link to the video, if you're tired of me pausing, just go watch it, it's fine. Um, but it, it sounds great, yeah, 90%. A cooler map would be, instead of all the countries, it's just like, what, like, outline the area on planet Earth that has been directly under British control, not just countries that have part of it, right? Or not very. It's pretty sensationalized. The book's introduction outlines what does and does not constitute an invasion. The author's definition of the word invade is quite broad, and many countries included in the list are far from what most people would consider an actual invasion. One particular inclusion which I found to be quite disingenuous was occasions when the British entered a country in order to help them, for example to help liberate a country from Nazi occupation during World War II. The introduction uses D-Day as an example of an invasion of France. Not that France needs any help in bumping up the numbers. Anyway, let's get started. I went through every country in the book and tried my best to divide them up into different categories, from the countries that quite clearly have been invaded to the few we never got round to, and everything in between. So let's start with the first and probably most agreeable category, countries that Britain have unambiguously invaded as sovereign entities in their own right. So there are several obvious countries. The first two that come to mind are France and Germany. Of course, the British were at war with most of the great powers of Europe at various times throughout the years, so there's also Spain, Russia, Austria, Italy, and Turkey. Now, outside of Europe, there's the United States, which, although gained its independence from the British 1812. Empire, was later invaded by Britain in the War of 1812. Okay, that, yep. There's also China, the Opium Wars, North Korea, the Korean War, and in more recent years, of course, there's been military intervention in the Middle East, with the invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq in 2001 and 3, respectively. So that's probably all of the most well-known invasions, but of course there's plenty more. We all know that Iraq was invaded, but what about Iran? In 1941, there was a joint British-Soviet invasion, despite the fact that Iran were neutral during World War II. Moving closer to home now and our good friend Ireland. Of course, Ireland used to be part of the United Kingdom, but 150 years before, when Ireland was ruled in a personal union by the King of England, they were invaded by Cromwell in 1649. Now, the Dutch were probably Britain's greatest maritime rival throughout the years, so there was plenty of conflict between the two nations. 
The other European nations that have been invaded are Denmark, Norway, Serbia, Montenegro and Bulgaria. In the Americas, there's not many more countries that have been invaded while they were an independent nation. By my account, there's Nicaragua in 1895 and Venezuela in 1902, who wrongly assumed the US would have their back. Now moving on to Africa, probably the most well known example from Africa is the Suez Crisis, in which British and French forces assisted Israel in their invasion of Egypt. Now Ethiopia, although managing to escape colonisation, did not manage to escape British invasion. The Ethiopian king had taken hostage a couple of British government officials in 1867, so the army was sent in to rescue them, killing some 700 Ethiopians in the process. Moving over to Asia next, and there's a few you might not expect. Bhutan lost a five month war to Britain in 1865, primarily due to having no standing army. Burma fought three wars against Great Britain in the 19th century, resulting in them being annexed to British India. Nepal's modern day borders were defined in the peace treaty of a lost war with the British in 1816. The British took the island of Sri Lanka, at the time known as Ceylon, from the delightfully named Kingdom of Kandy, but it was a bittersweet ending for them as they came under British occupation in 1817. The Bruneian Empire came to an end in 1888 at the hands of the British, becoming part of the North Borneo Protectorate. Thailand joined the Axis powers in World War II and the country came under temporary British occupation after the Japanese surrender. Okay, I, I get the feeling that um, this fact here, which I, I guess you could make a, a fact, it, it's, it, it seems like in order to make the fact true of that 90%, that you are stretching, anyone who's trying to prove this, that you're stretching every meaning of the word invade or occupy fit the 90%. So it feels like the 90% came first, and then any facts around proving that 90% came afterward to fit it, it is what it kind of seems. And I get it. You know, sometimes things sound cooler and people are like, huh, really? But I, I, I would, I'm very curious just what is the extent of land that Britain has ever controlled? I think that would be a cooler uh, map to see. In the aftermath of World War II, the communists of Vietnam declared themselves an independent nation, leading to British troops assisting the French in trying to regain control of Indochina. The situation in Indonesia got out of hand in the post-war period as well, when British troops invaded the archipelago fighting against a pro-independence movement. The Dutch were trying to restore their rule after the Japanese surrendered the islands. The British and Indonesian armies later clashed again in 1962. Moving on to the next category. Stuff. Now, I do think these countries should be counted, but for a variety of reasons it's not as clear cut as the previous category, or it was an invasion while the territory was controlled by a larger empire or kingdom. So starting with countries that were part of the British Empire, the most obvious ones being Canada, South Africa, India, Australia and New Zealand. Of course there are many, many more. For example, in the Americas, apart from the already mentioned Canada and of course the 13 colonies that would become the United States, there's also Belize, formerly known as British Honduras, and Guyana. Now those are the only four countries on the mainland Americas that were part of the British Empire, but there were several more in the Caribbean, most notably Jamaica, which was taken from the Spanish in 1655, although it's actually taken as a consolation prize after a failed attack on Santo Domingo, capital of modern day Dominican Republic. And there's also Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago, all of which have been in some way invaded by Great Britain. Now moving over to Europe, and as you may expect, there's not a lot here. Europeans were generally the ones doing the colonizing rather than being colonized, so there's just two countries, Malta and Cyprus. Do you have a flag? Malta was taken from France during the French Revolutionary Wars and the British were supposed to leave in 1802 but just sort of decided to stay because the locals requested so. The island officially became part of the empire in 1814. Now Cyprus was actually somewhat invaded by England as early as 1191. During the Third Crusade, Richard the Lionheart and his army got caught in a storm and some of his men who were shipwrecked got taken hostage by the local Byzantine ruler. So Richard just decided to go ahead and conquer the whole island. Anyway, Cyprus came under British administration in 1878 while nominally remaining part of the Ottoman Empire, but once they found themselves on opposing sides of the First World War, the Brits were suddenly less inclined to keep it as nominally part of anything, so Cyprus was officially annexed. Even to this day, there is British land on the island of Cyprus. 
During the scramble for Africa, the British more than got their fair share. As well as the countries that were granted to Great Britain during the Berlin Conference, there were also the German and Italian colonies that were inherited after Worlds War I and II respectively, as well as those that have gained their independence since the decolonization of Africa. These categories are not mutually exclusive, for example Tanzania is mostly made up of what used to be German East Africa, becoming the British territory Tanganyika and later merged with the British protectorate of Zanzibar, becoming the modern day country of Tanzania in 1964. As well as the previously mentioned involvement in the Middle East in recent years, there's also been plenty of not so recent involvement. Along with the countries that I've already talked about, there's also Israel, Jordan, Kuwait, Qatar, Yemen and the United Arab Emirates, whose territories were all British protectorates or mandates and have all seen British troops on their soil. Of course I've already mentioned India, but British India was much larger than simply the modern day country of India. As Myanmar, well as the previously Bangladesh, mentioned Burma, Pakistan. there's also Pakistan after the partition of India, the eastern part of which would later become Bangladesh. In Southeast Asia, there's Malaysia, which was made up of various crown colonies on the peninsula and was later joined with North Borneo. Singapore very briefly became a state of Malaysia but quickly became independent itself in 1965. Moving a little further east and we find Papua New Guinea, comprising the eastern half of the island of New Guinea and surrounding islands. The southeast portion of the island was a British colony, while the northeast was a German colony. The British colony was transferred to Australia and when Germany lost its colonies after World War I, the entire eastern half of the island was under Australian rule, gaining independence in 1975. The South Pacific is a region that Great Britain took a great interest in in the late 19th century. Many of the island nations that exist today have been under British rule, two of which still display the Union Jack on their flag to this day, as well as of course Australia and New Zealand. Of course we still haven't even considered the countries whose territory Britain invaded before they became independent. To start with, in the Americas there were plenty of conflicts with the Spanish. That's where it gets crazy big, because uh, that that right there is like territory that Britain invaded before that uh, before a country was made that that territory sits within. That that means you could conquer like one little tip of of China, right? And then count the entirety of China today as like invaded by Britain. China is not the best example because there was kind of extensive. Uh, I, I I get it. It's not that these. 90% of the world was conquered by Britain. It's that 90% of the countries in the world have territory that was once invaded by Britain. It doesn't sound as cool, but it's more accurate. Many Latin American countries have been invaded. I want to say, I'm not saying that this is technically false. It's just, you know, stretching. By because there were plenty of conflicts with the Spanish. Many Latin American countries have been invaded by Britain or England while part of Spain's colonial empire. Arguably Mexico has been invaded in its own right. In 1861 the British, Spanish and French landed their navies on Mexico's Atlantic coast demanding payment of debts. The French went on to launch a full scale invasion and even colonization attempt so the British and Spanish just sort of let them go on with it and left. Regardless of whether that counts or not, it certainly has been invaded well under Spanish rule, as have Honduras, Panama, Colombia, Peru, Argentina, Uruguay, and just about all of the Caribbean that wasn't actually under direct British control. Chile was invaded by Francis Drake in 1578. Now although he was a pirate, he was actually under direct orders from the English government. Africa is a pretty similar story. Although was he a pirate while under direct orders or was he a pirate after he was involved with uh, the British Navy and then he was... It was Drake, Francis Drake always on good terms with Britain? Or well, The colonial rivalry was more with France than Spain in this part of the world. Plus of course the locals themselves who often had a few minor objections of their own. Meanwhile in Europe, Finland, Latvia, Estonia and Ukraine were all invaded, in this case well part of the Russian Empire. In addition, what is today Belgium has been invaded many times before it actually became a country. Slovenia was invaded well part of Austria-Hungary and a Croatian island in the Adriatic Sea was taken well under French control. In the Bosnian War of the 1990s there was an invasion of the Republika Srpska which still exists today as one of the two political entities that make up the modern day country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Countries that were invaded well part of the Ottoman Empire include Greece, Azerbaijan, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Syria and Algeria. 
On top of all that, we still have countries that have been invaded, but where the situation is not as clear cut as the previous category. For example, one country that has sort of been invaded in its own right that you may not expect is Iceland. There were three minor wars in the 1970s, the Cod Wars, in which there was just one casualty, an engineer. But also, Britain technically invaded Iceland during World War II. Fearful of Nazi control of an island so close to home, the British kindly offered their military protection. When Iceland politely refused, the British just ignored them and turned up anyway. You're not resisting now, our Japan, protection. of course, were one of our main opponents in the Second World War, and while the country was never actually invaded as such, it certainly was on the receiving end of a naval bombing campaign towards the end of the war. In early 1946, the British Commonwealth Occupation Force landed in Japan to assist in the demilitarization of the country. And that's about it for that category. But that counts? And for me, these are the countries that have been invaded by Great Britain. About 65% of the countries in the world. The next category is a little bit more tricky. In this category, I've included countries that really could go either way. I probably would class- Eventually, there's, there's got to be a category where just a Brit has stepped foot in this country it. As them as a no personally, but I recognize that a good cause could be made. In this category, I've included countries that have been invaded in order to help the country. So in terms of friendly invasions, Portugal? if such a thing exists, there's our good friend Portugal, Britain's oldest ally, who fought alongside each other on many occasions. Likewise, Oman has been supported by Britain in various wars throughout the last two centuries. Okay, don't tell me like the Napoleonic Wars Portugal counted, right? Because wasn't Well, I'm not sure. Didn't... All right, the Iberian Peninsula wasn't entirely in France's control when the British landed in the Iberian Peninsula, correct? So if, if this is the case, that Britain was invited by Portugal not to invade them as in they, how they invaded France in uh, World War II, but help because there's an encroaching French army in, or in, in Iberia, right? And then they land in what is still Portuguese territory and then help them. If that counts, then we're getting ridiculous here. The Democratic Republic of Georgia was supported by the British and the Russian Revolution in 1918, but they soon became part of the Soviet Union. There's also Poland, who were helped in World War II, albeit a little late. Other countries that were helped during World War II include the Czech Republic, Macedonia, neither of which existed at the time of course, Albania, San Marino, as well as Morocco, Tunisia, Djibouti, Gabon, and plenty more, many of which I've already mentioned for other reasons. During the Korean War, South Korea was assisted by a large coalition of nations, including the British, against the Communist North, backed by China and the Soviet Union. I'd also like to give special mention to Brazil, which I've decided to include in this category. After a diplomatic dispute, the Royal Navy blockaded Rio de Janeiro for six days and diplomatic ties were broken for several years. So not quite an invasion, but certainly an unwelcome visit. One country that surprisingly hasn't suffered a full- Interesting flag. Can I just say it guys? I don't think the Brazilian flag is a very great flag. And just to put out fairness, I don't think the American flag is very- great either okay just 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 in looks in my opinion right i just i i don't know i feel like i might be kind of is it a bold statement that i don't think the brazilian flag is that great this one does it look great i guess i just don't like the the green and yellow but Sorry, certainly Jamaica. an unwelcome visit one country that surprisingly hasn't suffered a full-scale invasion is Hungary, despite being on opposing sides of both world wars. The Royal Air Force did operate in their airspace and some British spies carried out some unsuccessful missions during World War II, but that's about it. Likewise, while Romania wasn't invaded either, its capital Bucharest was bombed by the RAF. There are some other examples of British troops fighting conflicts in other countries' territory, but nothing that could be classed as an invasion in my opinion. For example, the British did briefly occupy Laos and Cambodia after the Japanese surrender in World War II, supporting the French as they re-established their control of Indochina. The countries that are remaining, these are the countries that have not been invaded. These include the 22 countries that I mentioned at the start of the video and all- Wow, never Sweden? You can't find something? Sweden? Namibia isn't uh, just a regular green. What what was the uh what was the asterisk here? 
Also, the countries that I personally feel the author is clutching at straws to justify and really should not be counted. For example, Moldova, where British armor cars just sort of pass through what is the modern day country. Count it! Do it! Country's territory during World War One. Hey guys, I, I hope I don't sound too frustrated with. I, I'm not too frustrated with these facts. I, I think they're fun a lot. It's just. I feel like I've graduated onto like second grade with history stuff. And so I, I don't like these facts don't impress me that much anymore. And so I really just want to be like, like what happened? Like it'd be, a, it, I don't need to have some really cool number given to me and then straws grasp that to, to justify it. Clearly Great Britain has invaded more countries than any other. It was, I think that's safe to say. So that's an interesting fact on its own. Or Lithuania, when King Henry IV of England led some knights on an unsuccessful siege of Vilnius in 1390, or the two failed settlement attempts on an island that is today part of Guinea-Bissau. In the case of Suriname, it was actually originally part of the British colony of Guyana, but the Dutch captured it during the Second Anglo-Dutch War and were allowed to keep it in the Treaty of Breda in 1667. In exchange, the British got New Amsterdam, or as the Brits called it, New York. So in conclusion, have Britain really invaded 90% of the countries in the world? No, of course not, but it is still incredible to the extent to which the British Empire has influenced the world and the lengths that the British military have travelled. Maps like this, and indeed my own map, should be taken with a grain of salt. The reality- Well, I like how you, you kind of pieced it together. Yes, with such a complex topic as this, it's always going to be impossible to have universal agreement due to different interpretations by different people. Depending on your definition of invade or even country, the number of countries invaded is going to vary wildly from person to person. Of course, people are going to disagree with my interpretation of these countries and which categories I've placed them in, and that's okay. It's an interesting topic and evokes an interesting discussion. Uh, yeah. Um. Has Britain really invaded 90%? Uh, so maybe you can fault this for the person like me assuming, but when you say Britain, has Britain really invaded 90% of the countries in the world, it makes me imagine Britain has taken over 90% of the land on the planet, which is just ridiculous how, how uh, any country would ever be able to do that. So when you look at the world right here, it, it makes you think that Britain has been really involved up in here. Look, it's all green. Oh, yeah, over here, British dominated. Um, uh, honestly, the, the one part I am a little surprised is, is never being uh, in these places, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I get... Um, I just, I, I guess it's more about this way of thinking that I don't like rather than the fact that that makes me a little uh, annoyed. Um, I, I just hate on, on any topic when people, they, they, something, I almost, bit my, something sounds cool and looks it. And then, and so you're, you're, you have your fact and now you're going to prove it rather than proving it and it becoming a fact, right? It's like, uh, that way of thinking, I think, is super common, and I and I hate it. But but um, it's not like I think this is a very harmful thing to say. It's just well, technically, no, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, interesting video, cool. I'd appreciate any comments, guys. Uh, no one recommended this. I just wanted to check this out. It was Wonder Why, correct? Cool channel. Hope you guys are doing well, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.